Christine Adams is a former federal prosecutor and current L.A.-based attorney who focuses on white-collar investigations. Christine, thanks for being with us. Good afternoon. How odd is it, uh, maybe it's not, for uh, two parties, uh, the prosecutor, the defense attorneys, thinking they have a deal to come into a federal courtroom, especially on a, on a high-profile case such as this, only to have it fall apart at the last minute? It's, it is unusual. It's not entirely unusual. But what is unusual here is the reasons for the agreement falling apart. It appears that the court determined that there was an ambiguity in the agreement, and there evidently was, in that she asked the defense and the prosecution if they had come to an agreement about the scope of the immunity as it related to Mr. Biden's possibly representing foreign governments in violation of federal law. And the parties in court indicated they did not have such an agreement because the government said that the plea agreement did not contemplate immunity that went that far. And uh, in response to that, the defense said that the agreement was therefore null and void. Is this kind of a plea deal unusual for situations like this? This kind of a plea deal is quite unusual because you have such a wide range of charges being contemplated. You typically have plea deals that can contemplate tax charges. And if you have tax charges, then it's not unusual to see a resolution involving tax misdemeanors. Um, But what's unusual here is you have a deal that contemplates tax charges, it contemplates gun charges, and it contemplates this, um, you know, these facts around Uh, potential violations relating to Mr. Biden's possibly representing foreign governments, you know, the alleged shakedown, so to speak. Um, That's what's particularly unusual about this kind of agreement. Uh, We also are now joined by uh, Chris Cameron, who is a reporter for The New York Times, who covered today's events uh, from the courtroom in Delaware. Chris, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, these things, this whole thing has become so political with uh, the Republicans, as you know, uh, saying that uh, Biden had gotten a sweetheart deal. Now I suspect some Democrats are going to say, oh, it fell apart because the judge is, I believe, a, a Trump appointee. But it does seem, as uh, Christine Adams just told us, as if there was some real ambiguity in this deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, this, you know, the more uh, this morning, the expectation that this would be a fairly routine hearing discussing Hunter Biden's plea deal. But this was anything but routine. The judge was really meticulously going through uh, line by line of this agreement, uh, scrutinizing specific provisions. Um, and she asked the prosecution and the defense essentially to make changes that would clarify her own role in the agreement and insert language that would limit the scope of immunity from prosecution that it would have granted Hunter Biden for past business dealings. And so what we're seeing here is that the judge, um, you know, was raising some pretty clear issues that she had with the deal and has sort of asked both the prosecution and defense to come back, uh, reconvene, discuss um, how, like, what changes are going to are they going to make, and bring it back before the court? And Chris, I understand. While you were not in the the courtroom itself, you were at the courthouse. What kind of a reaction were you you hearing from people afterwards? Um, I mean, there was certainly surprise. I mean, we went into this hearing expecting it to be fairly short and concise, and it went on for more than three hours. I mean, there was a recess in the middle um, where. Uh, the prosecution and defense were shown to have disagreed pretty strongly on how far uh, the deal took Mr. Biden in terms of immunity from further prosecution. And so the two sides had to huddle in the courtroom and sort of decide what does this specific line mean on immunity. And this was all just, you know, very surprising. I mean, these deals don't typically go this way. It was all buttoned up for a while and we came in thinking that this was going to be pretty straightforward and it turned out not to be all right chris thank you again that's chris cameron uh, joining us he's a reporter for the new york times he was at the courthouse we were also joined by christine adams former federal prosecutor